In today's video, we're gonna talk about using lane theory and your understanding of positioning to optimize your punch selection, keep you safe, keep you hitting hard, keep you dangerous so you can have success when you fight. Getting started, let's give a cursory summary of lane theory. Lane theory is the idea that from certain positions, you and your opponent can only land certain punches quickly and powerfully. If you understand these positions well, you can think ahead and you can select your shots and your defenses more effectively and in an optimal way to outwork and outmatch your opponent. Your lanes dictate your offense. Your opponent's lanes dictate your defense. Keeping a tracker in your mind of where your opponent is in your lanes and where you are in your opponent's lanes allows you to make educated decisions in exchanges. In today's video, we're just gonna focus on your shot selection based on where your opponent is in your lanes. I've had a lot of people asking, not for me to just talk about one or two situations, but to give a comprehensive understanding of lane theory. And while I think that that's a lot for one video, we're gonna try to break this up into several different videos, starting with this one today, where we're gonna talk about all of our basic, highest reward, lowest risk, offensive options across your five lanes. If your opponent is in your closed lane and at distance, your only option is the one. If they're in your closed lane and close, your only option is the four. If your opponent is in your jab lane, your one is your best option at range, your five is your best option in close, you can also throw your two and your four, but you must be careful of over-rotating and leaving yourself vulnerable. If your opponent is on your center line at range, you can throw your one or your two. If they're closer, you can throw your five or your six. Remember, if they're looking, you're not hooking. You wouldn't want to open with a hook in this position as it would be slappy and leave you vulnerable to a counter. Leave us a like and subscribe and share. It actually really helps with the algorithm, folks. We're gonna try to get back as my hand heals to doing a lot more of these technical videos. So let us know what you wanna see in the comments section. If your opponent is in your cross lane, your best option is the two at range or the six if they're near. You can pair your six and your three well and you can cross the jab over, but you must recognize that you're square when you do so. If your opponent is in your open lane, your only option is your three, unless you shift position and put them in a different lane. So lane theory not only dictates what you can throw quickly and powerfully, but it also gives you an understanding of what you shouldn't throw from specific positions. So we've talked before about if they're looking, you're not hooking, and we've been over that a million times, but let's give a different example. Let's talk about why wouldn't I throw my six to the closed lane. So if my opponent is in the closed lane, a lot of people's instinct is my feet are in alignment, my rear foot's back, I can drive into this shot powerfully. And perhaps you can. But the problem with this is when I finish this punch, I'm all twisted in on myself. My chest is pointed to my left, my hips are pointed forward, I've over-rotated and I've exposed myself in their jab lane on the right side of my head and my center line to their right hand. This isn't worth the risk. Teddy Atlas has a quote that I love where he says, the most important punch is the one you don't throw. Because punches aren't just attacks, they're opportunities for your opponent to counter and seize the momentum. So don't give them the chance. 
Mike Tyson has a quote I love in an interview in the 80s where he talks about what you need, the three things you need to knock somebody out. He says you need space to accelerate the shot, ideally they're moving into the shot, and ideally they don't see the shot coming. Lane theory allows you to take control of these things. You put yourself in a position where you can structure a shot well and do damage and you're leading the dance positionally so that they're gonna be moving into this and you're throwing shots that they're not gonna see coming because they're busy chasing, they're busy fixing their feet. As James Tony would say, you're turning them. You're always making your opponent fix their feet instead of focus on their defense and focus on their attack. Remember, lane theory is a system that weighs the balance of risk and reward. It's ideally the system you can adhere to that will maximize your reward and minimize your risk. Now, you can break lane theory. You can try to hook on the line. You can try to punch long. You can try to cross lanes. There's nothing wrong with that, but you must know that it comes with associated risks. And from my perspective, as somebody who's been doing this for over two decades, I think that whenever I break this system, if I don't have an opponent out of position or very, very fatigued, both psychologically and physically, then it's not worth the risk. And I'm gonna to stick to the fundamentals and the positions that I can trust. In today's video, I gave you folks what you've been asking for. You've been asking for me to break down a comprehensive list of what punches you can throw from what positions if you're thinking about lane theory. Stay tuned because in the coming weeks, we're gonna flip this video and we're gonna talk about this from a defensive perspective. If you learned something today, please hit that like and subscribe button. It helps us out a lot. And stay tuned as our road to 100 continues, as our continued technical videos continue so that you can learn something and have success when you fight. Remember, lane theory is a system that weighs the balance of risk and reward I knew I wasn't going to make it through that one.